Good morning and welcome to the inaugural Bay Multi UK Symposium themed Equity in Action. My name is Kweku Ajiman, with my pronouns being he, him. I am a 35 year old able bodied cisgendered heterosexual male of African descent, specifically Ghana on the west coast of Africa. It's a real pleasure to see so many of you from around the world on what is a Saturday morning for us here in the UK. For you to show up, demonstrate the support you have for our group and also the passion you have to want to make a difference in the world and to the field of occupational therapy. I would like to, like to start off by saying a big thank you to all involved in putting this symposium together. It's not an easy task organizing such an event. Most of this work is done outside of family life, relationships, full-time careers and studies amongst many other responsibilities. A lot of the work is completed selflessly and at times unnoticed. So I would like to again recognize the efforts of the organizers with a big thank you, especially to Mish, Kalima, Kalisawa, Eden, Sherlin, and Leah. I remember during one of our monthly meetings in the winter of 2020, making a suggestion that we should put together a symposium of some kind and the support for this was there amongst those present. I'm passionate and I've always been about showcasing the work of occupational therapists especially those from a minoritized background, who at times sit with the majority of the work bringing about equity to the profession. It makes me very happy today to be sitting here realizing that a subset of our members have taken the nuggets of an idea planted on a cold winter's evening and brought it to life. It makes me very proud to be part of this community and long may it live on. Just to give you a background to Bay Multi UK, if you do not already know, we were founded in June 2020, following the tragic public murder of George Floyd in May 2020 in the United States of America. I, like most other people in the world, was shocked at this incident. Of course, I expressed the emotions I felt at the time with friends and family to try and, try and make sense of something that seemed senseless. Eight minutes and 46 seconds of complete senselessness, to be exact. Of course, police brutality against black and minoritized communities around the world is sadly not anything new. It is also not predominantly restricted to the United States of America. We have had our own very, very horrific watershed moments here in the UK. However, this particular incident sent shockwaves around the world and brought to the forefront the discrimination and inequality faced by minoritized communities. It was a traumatic experience for all who saw it. This could have been me, could have been my father, brother, uncle, cousin, or grandfather at the receiving end of what I described as a very public lynching. It was absolutely horrific hearing those words, I can't breathe. Turning to my occupational therapy social media handle, I was expecting to see widespread condemnation and disapproval from those I follow and also support for the Black Lives Matter movement, which had resurfaced. I did see the support from a majority and was touched by it. Having created the OT and Chill podcast to discuss all things occupational therapy, I decided that this would be the best platform at the time to show support to the movement on a micro level. I felt that it was very important to advocate for justice and equality, starting from our own staffing group and especially for those from a minoritized background. I made the decision to use the OT and Chill platform to gather the thoughts and feelings of Black and minoritized occupational therapists here in the UK about what was happening around the world, their experiences of racism and injustice, how they felt equity and justice was being delivered in the field of occupational therapy, and what they felt were the next steps moving forward. The episode received positive feedback and seemed to have had a real impact on people and their willingness to make changes or begin to become critically reflexive in regards to racism and inequity. Following the release of the podcast episode, I put out a call on Twitter about creating an online safe space for black and minoritized occupational therapists and educators to further share their thoughts and feelings. With this call out, there was a desire to connect, discuss and, discuss and share experiences of injustice and racism of the past and present within the profession. Organically from that meeting, a few people felt it would, be a, it would be paramount to continue having these meetings for regular sharing of experiences in a safe space and also to engage in activism to bring about equity in the profession. Der birthed BAME OT UK. 
We are a diverse community of occupational therapy staff, students, educators of Black, Asian and minoritized heritage based here in the UK. We aim to create change through establishing a space for discussion, support, activism, teaching, learning, outreach, education, mentorship and partnership working. We act in the pursuit of equal opportunities, equity, justice, diversity and belonging. I am aware that the acronym BAME has received many negative tones and this is understandable. However, the longer we spend discussing the name change, the further we go away, we go away from putting equity into action. There was, however, a deafening silence from one particular corner of the occupational therapy field here in the UK, our professional body, the Royal College of Occupational Therapists. Our profession largely strives to advocate for occupational and social justice for the people that we work with, with the principles of diversity and equality at its core. But in that moment, the profession did not, the professional body did not seem to be adhering to this. I was expecting to see a swift, unequivocal statement from our professional body condemning this traumatic event while showing support and solidarity with its Black members. But this was nowhere to be found until the 5th of June 2020. Occupational therapy students, staff, and educators of Black, Asian, and minoritized heritage wondered over this period why the Royal College had remained silent despite some of the queries being made to them via social media about it. Action began from there. Members of, of BAME OT UK composed an open letter to RCOT in response to the statement of solidarity and was signed by 48 people from both black and minoritized communities and those who were not. They felt the RCOT statement raised more questions that needed answering about what the professional body intended to do next to really bring about equity and justice. The letter also provided recommendations and resources to assist the RCO team beginning to make, make some changes to its own structure and strategies. The Justice-Based Occupational Therapy Network in June 2020 wrote in their statement, and I quote, as a profession, we must face the hard truth that because of systemic racism, all people do not have the same access to and or the ability to engage in occupations. We are not fully animating our professional ethics if we do not address how racism affects our practice sites, interactions, selection of interventions and therapy outcomes. BAME OT UK, we're ready to address how racism affects the profession and what we do and also take action to make changes happen. We recognize that we cannot do this work alone and began to align ourselves with other groups who were a little bit further ahead with this work, like the Chartered Society of Physiotherapists BAME Network. There were many things happening in the world in 2020. The year began with climate, the climate crisis with the Bush, Australian bushfires before the sad death of Kobe Bryant. And also moved on, the world was gripped by the COVID-19 pandemic. In the midst of the pandemic, systemic racism reared its ugly and prominent head with the health inequalities experienced disproportionately by those from a black and minoritized community. COVID really highlighted the health inequalities with ethnicity being a key component to this. Social economic deprivation, high risk occupations that led to high risk of contracting COVID and household sizes all contributed to the inequalities experienced. I believe that systemic racism has played a significant role in this. The systems and structures we live in are often not developed to provide equity to all who reside in it. Policies are often not written in, the fav in favor of the deprived and marginalized folk in our societies. There's clear evidence about the degree awarding gap at universities, leaving students from a black and minoritized background at a disadvantage. The disproportionate rate of black and minoritized people in our prison system is also evident. The lack of black and minoritized people in leadership roles in different organizations, despite there being an evident talent pool, is also evident. Along came the race and the race and disparities report by Tony Soro in April 2021. The purpose of this report was to lay the ground for a country built on the full participation and trust of all communities. I do not believe its outcomes met its aims. 
The report essentially dismissed the prevalence of systemic racism, ultimately dismissing the experiences of people who struggle and are the cold face of racism on a daily basis. This kind of public support fuels motivation and action needed to bring about changes. These changes need the communities working together for them to be embedded and flourish. So now we're here. Not only do we as Baymulti UK have a thriving community, but one that is respected and has gained both national and international support and recognition. Over the last two years, Baymulti UK has gone from strength to trend. And that's as an affinity group has achieved several milestones. We have inspired the formation of the LGBTQAI plus OT UK and ABLE OT UK affinity groups who have so far done and continue to do fantastic work around equity and justice in relation to sexuality and disability respectively. As a community, we have run and supported campaigns for our members to be elected onto different boards and positions in the RCOT, or Def Richardson being the latest, becoming the first black person to be elected chair of council at the RCOT. Mish's exceptional nomination of Dr. Anita Atwell to deliver the prestigious Elizabeth Casson Memorial Lecture in 2021 was successful. Dr. Atwell became the first person from a black or minoritized community to, do, to deliver this lecture since 1996. We have continued as Baymulti UK to support the work by Dr. Atwell and colleagues around the No Barriers to Success, Success project. As a community, we have also engaged in activism and campaigned for the role of an equality, diversity and inclusion manager to be established within the RCOT and this has now been achieved. We also created a YouTube channel to share a Let's Talk series of podcasts focusing on some of the very important topics in relation to equity and justice. We have had many people from, a, from the Black and minoritized background reach out to us informing us of how representations in these conversations have helped them gain confidence during the occupational therapy training and careers. The community has also been mentioned during presentations at the RCOT and World Federation of Occupational Therapy Conferences as the go-to network for support and resources around equity and justice. Our members have collaborated with several, several different organizations and networks across the globe, delivered lectures worldwide, presented at conferences, written book chapters, and provided workshops and training opportunities, plus much, much more. We have found our voices and continue to make it heard through collaborations with organizations such as Disrupt OT, to bring about impactful change. We inspired the Elizabeth Cassin Trust to form the Fairness Observatory, exploring diversity, inclusion, and inequity within the profession. We also influenced changes made to their overall strategy. We have supported a number of our members in making progress in their careers through mentorship, support, and advice. I myself have benefited from this encouragement from this community in becoming the lead occupational therapist in my service. I'm sure I've missed many of our achievements, but the takeaway message from this is that representation matters. And this good stuff happens when you come together as a community to make good disruptive noise and take action. We will continue to showcase black and brown faces. So why equity in action? Well, equity is defined as the quality of being fair and just. Essentially, the system we are, we are in has not removed the structural barriers to enable people to thrive. Action is defined as the process of doing something in order to make something happen. Equity in different aspects is not just a societal issue, but can be characterized as the elephant in the room in the occupational therapy field. Many of us here today have been working tirelessly to put equity into action for many, many years. This tireless work of activism, advocating and allyship has often been faced with backlash and negative connotations from those wishing to maintain the status quo and not bring about the much needed change. This is nothing new. Anytime those who are minoritized stand up to the majority, there is a standoff. 
I urge you to keep knocking on the door of the majority through the use of action in order to bring about the changes needed. A lot of people are willing to take action and perhaps they do not know how to. Of course, talking as a starter can be seen as action, but the talking that has been happening over the last two years has often not been accompanied by the appropriate action needed. Unfortunately though, it doesn't matter how many resources we have and also are provided, if one does not know how to use them, or sadly and more importantly, is unwilling to use them, it would never be enough. This is why taking action is very, very important to me. Action brings about change. It brings about creativity. It fuels motivation and brings about new opportunities. Action can and will bring about equity. Mandela once said, it's easy to break down and destroy. The heroes are those who make peace and build. So representation matters. And with this symposium, we are delivering equity in action by redressing the imbalance of the underrepresentation of black and brown presenters within this conference circuit for occupational therapy. Thank you. Lee, can you put up the housekeeping slide, please? Perfect, thank you very much. I would like to go on by uh, extending a big thank you to our main sponsors, the Elizabeth Cassin Trust, through the Generous Innovation Fund for helping to make this symposium possible. You are all encouraged to apply for this fund to support your equity activities going forward. A big thank you also goes to the RCOT for their seeding fund, which helps to support the development of the fantastic platform we are using today. A special thank you to Clickapad for designing this, this platform we are using. And a big shout out to Lee Simmons for providing the technical support for the symposium today. All the presentations from today will be recorded and found on our YouTube channel at a later date. So please keep up a lookout for that. On the symposium platform, you can find all the links to the bios of our presenters, along with resources, quizzes, links to posters for viewing during the breaks or at your own leisure. Link, and then also a link to our brand new website designed by one of our student members, Aiden. You will also find a link to our GoFundMe page we are adhering to the principles of the no free labor. And with this, all presenters are being paid for their knowledge, time, and energy. Historically, this has not, this has not been the case with black and brown people often enduring the hard labor and graft of this kind of work without pay. Therefore, with the donations you make, therefore the donations we make will go towards this and also help us to begin to plan for the symposium next year. There is a short break after me. During this time, please, please have a look through the symposium platform and make sure you return around 10.30 to listen to our keynote talk from Dr. Dave Thomas. I hope you all enjoy and learn from all the wonderful and inspirational speakers we have here for you today. And please, please, please use the Q&A platform to ask any questions, be curious, no questions ever silly, no opinion is ever silly, and, but please be respectful. And let's get the BAME OT UK hashtag trending. Thank you and have a fantastic day. Hope to see you soon.